Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. You may have noticed that I didn't release a video this Tuesday, as per the usual schedule. Well, it's all Polyphony Digital's fault. I've been completely thrown off track by Gran Turismo 7. This game is friggin' great. I played sport for a little over a year, and as much fun as it was once in a while, I just couldn't really get into it. The online gameplay was fun when you weren't getting rammed off track. The physics were pretty good for an entry-level type of sim racing game. Graphics were okay, nothing terrible, but GT7, wow, what an update. Everything is better. The traditional style of gameplay is back in full force. We've got the everyday cars back, including the used car shop, the new car shop, the tuning shop makes a return so you can beef up your car or make it all nimble and sleek, paint it how you want, put a huge wing on it, or remove it entirely if that's more your speed. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there, huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, anyways, I decided to take a few days off and delve into GT7, and I have to say, I'm truly impressed. What? Get back to the video... <sighs> Fine, whatever. I didn't want to talk about GT7 anyways. You brought it up. <sighs> Fine, here's your power target video, nerd. Hey, welcome back to... Wait, didn't we do this already? Anyways. During my review of the RTX 3060 Ti, I was impressed with the level of performance offered at only 200 watts. Fan noise and power limitations for overclocking aside, performance was on par with the previous generation RTX 2080 Super. When I reviewed the RTX 3060, I was very impressed with the noise level, the thermal performance of the single fan and the THICK cooler on the Asus card, and the performance offered at just 160 watts. This card's value is seriously hard to beat. There I was, comparing the 3060 and the 3060 Ti in my own time, and I honestly started to wonder. If I reduce the RTX 3060 Ti's power target to match that of the 3060, just how much, if any, performance would I lose? How much would this reduce heat output in my system? Would I see similar performance to that of the 3060, or would the additional CUDA cores keep performance above the 3060 while reducing power consumption and heat? I then ran a couple of games that I thought would push these cards enough to be a fair comparison, and to my surprise, the 3060 Ti was able to offer extra performance. Not a ton of performance, but still, it offered more frames at the same power target. I was prepared to leave it alone and just think to myself, cool, that was an interesting comparison. Who would have thought? Of course, if I make a video on this, everyone will know just how much of a super nerd I really am. I mean, who's going to care about performance of a better card at the same power limit as a lower tier card? But then it hit me. I also have an RTX 3080 Ti at my disposal. How would that beast of a flying brick perform at just 160 watts? Can I even set the power limit low enough to run this test? Yes. Yes, I can. So, here we are. I made the dang video, and I have the dang results. Super nerds, assemble! I realize probably no one out there is asking for this test comparison, but I was curious, and this is the kind of content that's at the heart of Hardly Tech. If you'd like to see more interesting tests like this one, subscribe! Help me beat that algorithm. As you've been seeing during my monologue slash intro, the results are pretty interesting. The RTX 3060 is of course behind the other cards, but then again, is that really surprising? The RTX 3060 has 3584 CUDA cores, 15GB per second VRAM on a 192-bit bus. The RTX 3060 Ti has 4864 CUDA cores, 14GB per second VRAM on a 256-bit bus. And the 3080 Ti has 10240 CUDA cores. Hot dang! 19 gigabyte per second VRAM on a 384-bit bus. So it would seem like a no-brainer, right? Wrong! The 3060 Ti and the 3080 Ti offer pretty similar performance in each of these games, with the 3060 generally being within 5 frames per second, sometimes a little more, but still very commendable performance. For this test, I didn't overclock or underclock any of these cards in part to let each GPU handle its own power management and see how each card handles the RTX 3060's power limitations, and in part because of how the 3060 Ti and 3080 Ti handle power limitations. The 3060 Ti being a 200 watt card, every 1% power target change is essentially a 2 watt change in consumption. 
The RTX 3080 Ti, being a 400 watt monster, every 1% of power target change is about a 4 watt change in consumption. So I matched up the power limit on a game by game basis, since each game pushed the 3060 to a different level of power consumption. I also chose 4K as our test resolution to make sure we're pushing as much of performance constraints onto the GPU as possible, as lower resolutions will tend to be more CPU limited, and we want to be GPU limited for this test. This way we maintain as stable and as constant a power draw as possible, so we don't get big dips during test runs. At 1080p and 1440p, the RTX 3060 has a habit of reducing power consumption down to about 120 to 140 watts. I wanted to keep the 3060 as near to its standard power target of 160 to 170 watts as possible. So if you're new to Hardly Tech, or you want to keep up to date on the day-to-day -day and upcoming projects, check me out over on Twitter at Hardly underscore Tech. In testing the 3060 Ti, depending on the game and the VRAM usage, it tends to trade blows with the 3080 Ti. We see a very minimal core clock reduction to about 1600 MHz or so on the 3060 Ti, and at about 180 watts, the 3060 Ti will maintain about the same frame rate as at the 200 watt power limit. The RTX 3080 Ti, however, limits core clock speeds to between 700 to 900 megahertz, but is still maintaining performance that matches the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. I find this fascinating and honestly very impressive. If we take a look at thermals, we can also see that the 3060 has the highest core temps and the highest core clocks to boot at 1900 MHz and above, and thermals sit generally between 52 to 60 Celsius. While the 3060 Ti is maintaining about 50 to 56 Celsius, and surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, the 3080 Ti is seeing the lowest core temps out of the three, maintaining between 42 to 46 Celsius. Something else to note, when the 3060 Ti runs out of VRAM, or comes close to running out of VRAM, it will offload data to system RAM, which can be seen in testing. A number of games see additional system RAM usage while using the 3060 Ti, even when using only about 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and performance takes a bit of a dip, as not only does this mean more shuffling data around from system RAM to VRAM and vice versa, but an increase in CPU utilization as well to make that transfer happen. If you reduce VRAM usage on the 3060 Ti, you'll see a marked improvement in minimum and average frame rates. We can see evidence of this in CSGO and PVZ Battle for Neighborville. You'd see some improvement in overall performance on the other two GPUs as well, but not nearly as drastic as they have more VRAM to begin with. The performance gain would be from the reduction in the game settings. Now please don't be confused. This video isn't to try and tell people that they need to undervolt or underclock their GPUs. I'm not trying to tell you how you should run your systems. This test was born out of my own curiosity, and now I'm presenting to all of you my findings. This does present an interesting situation though. If you're someone who's playing at 1440p or 1080p with one of these cards, and your aim is a solid 60 FPS, you could potentially reduce the power limit on your GPU and see drastically reduced power consumption and heat output into your system. With MSI Afterburner and RTSS, it's very easy to set power limits, under or over clocks, monitor your system performance, and then save a profile based on your specific needs in any given gaming or production scenario. At 4K, this will be less possible as the demand for performance is pretty high, but if you're willing to reduce in-game settings or set your game on a resolution scale, you could potentially see less demand for performance and reduce power draw as well and make life easier on your PC. If you'd like to help support Hardly Tech directly, consider becoming a Patreon member. Link is on the Hardly Tech main page on YouTube, or you can find Hardly Tech directly by searching Hardly Tech on Patreon. And of course, the best and easiest way to support Hardly Tech is to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next video. Bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.